few years ago, we were all astonished to hear that a man cut off his own hand to escape certain death in a Utah canyon. And we cried when we read about the couple who lost their lives while climbing a peak in Labrador. These are extreme situations, but we often put our lives at risk needlessly every day because we like to think bad things will never happen to us. My guests are in the business of rescuing people who think they're invincible, and they say that knowing the basics can mean the difference between life and death. David Arama is the director of WSC Survival School. And paramedic Paul Tarsitano also runs first aid courses with the Survival School. And they're here to teach us the basics in life-saving techniques, whether in the wilderness or maybe in your own living room. And we'd like to hear from you today. Maybe you're planning a camping trip and you want to know what should be in your first aid kit. Or maybe you want to know the best clothing to wear while hiking. Or perhaps you have cheated death and you want to tell us your story. You can send us a brief email. The address is more to life at tvo.org or give us a call. The number is toll free at 1-888-411-1234. I'm also curious to know, David, when, when I, I remember reading that article, and he was knowledgeable. It wasn't as if he never did this. He was a knowledgeable wilderness guy, right? Yeah, was what so. was it that he did wrong then? I mean, what yeah. happened? What, what went wrong on that trip? Well, he was very experienced, <clears throat> but one of the, the bottom line factors that uh, resulted in, in this disastrous situation was he, he didn't leave an uh, emergency trip plan behind with authorities, whether that would be the, uh, the search and rescue uh, authorities or the uh, local police force or loved ones who want him back alive. Uh, so having no trip plan left behind, uh, when he got into that situation, uh, nobody uh, knew that he was mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a scenario like that. So there was no uh, lost person occurrence report uh, uh, completed and so nobody started the search and, until several days later when they realized he was missing at work and at home and then they, they started to search a, a vast area. So what he probably should have uh, done was leave some emergency trip uh, itinerary type plan behind and maybe some maps to, uh, to outline where exactly he would be. And that's mm. what we recommend and that's what the search and rescue okay. recommends. What about the fact that he even went alone? Oh, well that's another thing. If you can avoid going out alone in the wilderness, it's always recommended. It's not always uh, possible. Yeah. Some people work, uh, you know, and their career takes them in the wilderness. But at least if you have another person there, if something yeah. happens, they can go out for help or do something. And the other thing was the communication equipment. Uh, had he had some communication equipment like a satellite phone, um, or I'm not sure if they had cell phone coverage in that particular mm. area, then he might have been able to radio out, you know, SOS, problem, come yeah. get me. So, yeah. some basic things. So, I'm trying to take from this, you know, for the regular person who's not advanced, who doesn't go out in the wilderness, basically, wherever you go, let someone know where you are, right? Is that the first Absolutely. golden rule? Yes. Yeah. Pre prevention. Prevention, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I'm also wondering, too, if we brought your friend Annie yeah. in with you. They're all called Annie, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they are, actually. <laughs> yeah, keeps it simple. Um, so, you're going to do a little demo, CPR sure. for us, right? Yeah. Yeah. What, what is CPR? Cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Basically what it is, is we're, as CPR, we're becoming this person's lungs and heart. So we're actually, with CPR, with the compressions, we're circulating um, blood, hopefully oxygenated blood, around the body to keep the vital organs alive. Okay, and you would do this, or, or someone would do this whenever what? Whenever there is no pulse, or you don't think there is a pulse at all. Okay. A cardiac arrest, when the heart okay. is stopped beating. All right. Okay, just before we do the demo, I just want to remind our viewers, in case you've just tuned in today, we're talking about various worst-case scenarios that hopefully you will never have to face. But if you do have any questions at all, whether it's we're just talking about a bleeding incident there, we're going to demonstrate CPR, maybe you're a camper, maybe you go out in the wilderness and you have some questions about survival and survival kits, uh, maybe you're going camping this summer, or perhaps you have a story of your own to tell, you can email us, uh, send us a brief email, the address is more to life at tvo.org or give us a call. The number is toll-free, 1-888-411-1234. All righty, let's get Annie in on the action here. Okay, great. Well, first of all, I always recommend for everyone to take a CPR class. Mm -hmm. It only lasts for four, um, four hours or, or longer. But basically, to keep it simple, as I st uh, stated in the beginning, we want to try to remain calm, take that deep breath, and just try to slow ourselves down. So when we see someone on the ground, I... I like to make it as easy as one, two, three, A, B, C. 
So first of all, number one, we try to take that deep breath, remain calm, and before I even touch this person, I want to make sure the area is safe. And a little saying, no fire, no wire, no glass, no gas, no guns, no knives, no dogs, no traffic. Look up, look down, look all around, sniff the air, and then approach. If it's safe, we go to number two. So as I approach, I may even want to yell for help because there may be people around that may hear that. And then for two, I want to assess responsiveness. Who knows if this person is sleeping or not? So to assess responsiveness, we're going to tap on both shoulders, not forcefully, and we're going to yell in both ears. So I would come up, tap, yell in both ears, hey, wake up, wake up, any, any, you okay, you okay, you okay. Once they're not, respond, uh, they're not responding, this is very important. Number three is crucial, that you call 911 right away. You've before got, you start. Before, before you okay. start, mm -hmm. because um, what we definitely need, sure CPR is important, but if it is a cardiac arrest, what's going to really um, help this person to hopefully restart that heart is the defibrillator. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and we've got to get help right away. Right. And in Toronto, we have paramedics and also advanced life support paramedics to do that. So, I'm calling for 911. Mary, can you please call 911? This person is not responding. You know where we are. Right. Come back to me as soon as you can. If there's a first aid kit, please come back to me and let me know how long they're going to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank okay. you. Great. So, one, two, three is done. Now I'm going to do the ABCs. If injuries permit, I'm going to open the airway, look, listen, and feel for 10 seconds. So the rule of thumb here has been about 10 seconds for things. I assess for 10 seconds, now I'm going to open the airway. If I have gloves, we want to protect yourself. If it's a family member, you still might still want to protect yourself. You never know, all right? So I come up. If injuries permit, I'm going to open the airway. You can see the airways open. Right. I'm going to look, listen, and feel for 10 seconds. I'm going to look for the chest if there's any rising. I'm going to listen to see if there's any breathing. Um, and I'm going to feel if there's any breath on my cheek. And I do this intentively. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. All right. I don't think this person is breathing. Now. Hopefully I have a barrier mask. I strongly recommend a barrier mask. And I've got one here, but if I don't have one, right. and as a family member, and I'm very confident this person doesn't have anything, I'm going to give two breaths. So I'm going to tilt the, the head, pinch the nose, look in the mouth. If I don't see any object, no things like that, that's not going to be driven down, I'm going to give two slow breaths. You see the chest rise. Mm -hmm. Now what I'm going to do is I've done A, I've done B, I go to C. Signs of circulation, any coughing, any movement, anything that's going to show me there's signs of life. And I could also add a carotid pulse check. A lot of agencies still teach a carotid pulse or a pulse at your neck. So I find the Adam's apple, uh, Adam's apple and I move to the side and I use my two or three fingers but not my thumb because mm -hmm. your thumb also has pulse. Mm -hmm. So I look, listen, and count again. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. Even if I don't think this person has a pulse or I'm not sure, I'm going to landmark and start CPR. Landmark? And I'm going to show you. Okay. <laughs> now, in this case, if they're on a bed or a sofa, I've got to get them off. And I've got to get them on a hard firm surface. Mm -hmm. So I landmark. Basically what I'm doing is I'm going up the rib cage and I'm finding a notch called the xiphoid process. Basically it's right um, underneath the breastbone. Mm -hmm. And the reason you want to avoid that is that it can um, bend this piece of cartilage and it could cut some organs. So you want to really be careful. Now the technique I'm going to do now is for eight years and up. That's what we consider adult for adult CPR eight years old and up for this two-handed technique. Oh, okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So I landmark like so. Two breaths gone in. I'm going to do 15 compressions. They're going to be pretty quick. One and a half to two inches in depth and you come up the same. So one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten and eleven and twelve and thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. You slow yourself down. You come back and you give two breaths. 
Now you would do that for four cycles mm -hmm. or a minute and then you reassess. Okay. Meanwhile, you are, you, for the average person. I'm freaked out. Basically. Exactly. <laughs> I, <know that. laughs> I was yeah. going to say that. Yeah. Now, if you call 911 and right. you totally forgot about things, yes. dispatch will direct you. Okay. and go through oh. that yes oh okay that yeah, is just helpful to absolutely know, right? okay I, I got a couple of quick questions sure. here all right once i start this process right mm -hmm. and i notice nothing is happening am i obligated to keep this going until help arrives obligated in regards to first of all um you stop when someone else takes over right another trained first aider takes okay. over if it's too dangerous for you get out of that area right you're too tired there are spontaneous uh, pulse or breathing back, but uh, an obligation to uh, you. There's, it's more of a moral type yeah. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. This is for basic. Because even if I don't see a sign, is what I'm saying. It, I should still keep trying. Even, Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, and if you don't, even if there's blood or vomitus or anything yeah. in the mouth, you can get them on their side. Still call 911 right away. Right. And if you don't want to go mouth to mouth, and you're sure there's no pulse, start CPR. Okay. Now, you know, earlier you were saying you can use something else as a barrier yeah. if you don't have the proper barrier. What sure. can you use as a barrier if you don't, if you don't have, have a proper one? Well, you know, I strongly recommend to have um, something on the keychain that is disposable. For example, this one uh, gives you some protection, but it fits in a keychain with a set of gloves. All right? And that would just basically go in the mouth. Now, any hair, you know... It won't go in, but an adult it certainly will go okay. in. And it's a one-way valve preventing some vomitus. Okay. Now, if you don't have anything, yeah. yeah, you know, you can still use maybe a plastic bag, but still you're not protected. I want to be honest with you that there is definitely a risk with going mouth-to-mouth -mouth on somebody uh, without a protection. Yeah. Where can you get that? Where can you, know, you get that barrier? These, are, um, these barriers are located a lot of, um, in regards to all first aid places. Okay. Can I, is it okay to name a few okay, uh, schools? Sure. Yeah, no, no. yeah. Um, most common, a St. John Ambulance, oh, okay, Canadian sure. Red Cross. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And okay. Now here's my other fear, right? Sure. While I'm doing this and trying to help this yes. person, right? What happens if I break some ribs? Yeah. You know, and that could happen. Absolutely. Okay. What you, um, you would continue going on because the damage you do uh, on the person, if there is a neurological save can mm. be, um, repaired down the road. It could, they could heal. Ribs could heal. Well, I mean, that leads me to you, David. What, what do you actually need to have with you? I mean, if you're talking about survival and survival kits, right? Yes. What are the essentials? <clears throat> well, since snowmobile deaths are the leading, leading cause of fatalities in Ontario at the moment, mm. uh, one of the uh, basic essentials people should carry is, first of all, have flotation. So have a life jacket or a PFD or some kind of survival suit. So you float. That's first thing. Second thing, you may want to carry ice picks and you can buy these at any outdoor store and because if you do fall through at least you have a chance if you're alone to pull yourself out you have to have them on you then you have to have them yeah. you have to wear them they can't yeah. be buried in a kit yeah. just uh, forget about being mm -hmm. able to get them and then you should also have a, a, a buoyant uh, heaving line or rope preferably a throw bag especially if you're with more than one person and someone can throw you a line from a safe spot and, and pull you out. What, what is this bag? It's, it's called a throw bag yeah, what and uh, what it is it would have maybe 15 or 20 meters of, of, of rope that okay. floats. It's buoyant. It's, uh, okay. it's made for that. Um, because if you don't have these things, I, I have uh, several cases where people couldn't crawl out and one case in particular I heard about where the gentleman uh, uh, took his hand and, and stuck it on the ice and froze it on there yeah. so he could pull himself out. That is not what you want to end up having to do. It's much easier to have the ice picks yeah. to pull you out. Did he get frostbite? Uh, he did. That's yeah. the problem. So, but he saved his life. So that was yeah. that was important. 